We want to determine the equation for the graph in red based upon what we know about the graph of y equals the absolute value of x, which is graphed in black. So let's call this, so let's call the black absolute value function f of x, and we'll call the transformed function g of x. Because g of x is a transformation of f of x, we can write g of x in this form here, where the values of a, b, c, and d transform the function f of x. So to start, we want to describe the type of transformations that have occurred to create the red graph. Well, the first thing we should notice is that the V shape has changed. The red graph has either been vertically compressed or horizontally stretched. And we can select which transformation we want to use. If we want to treat it as a vertical compression, we'll have to determine the value of A. If we want to consider it a horizontal stretch, we'll have to determine the value of B. Let's go ahead and consider this a vertical compression. We'll determine the exact value of A later, but since the graph has not been reflected across the x-axis, we know A has to be positive. Next, notice how the low point of the black graph is at the origin, but now the low point is at negative two, one, which means the graph has been shifted left two units and up one unit. So because the graph has been shifted left two units, we'll have to determine the value of C. And because it's been shifted up one unit, we'll have to determine the value of D. Which means we can write G of X in the form G of X equals A times F of the quantity X plus C plus D. And again, we can probably determine the value of A from the graph, but what we're gonna do is find the values of C and D first, and then use a point on the red graph to determine the value of A. So from our past experience, we should recognize that if the graph is shifted left two units, then C is going to be positive two. Remember, this may be the opposite sign that you would think of, but for the horizontal shift, if it's positive, it's shifted left C units, and if it's negative, it's shifted right C units. And then because it's shifted up one unit, D is going to be positive one. So we know that G of X must equal A times F of the quantity X plus two plus one. So using the absolute value function, that means G of X is equal to A times the absolute value of X plus two plus one. And now to determine the value of A, we'll select a point on the red graph and then perform substitution into the function to solve for A. So if we use this point here on the red graph, where the x-coordinate is two and the y-coordinate is two, that means g of two is equal to two. So for g of two, we would have a times, if x is two, we'd have the absolute value of four plus one. This must equal positive two. So this would give us the equation four a plus one equals two. Subtract one on both sides, we have four a equals one. Divide both sides by four, we have A equals one-fourth. This is all the information we need to determine our function G of X. We'll substitute one-fourth here for the value of A. So we have G of X equals one-fourth times the absolute value of the quantity X plus two plus one. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we probably could have determined this one-fourth by analyzing the graph. Remember, this represents a vertical compression by a factor of one-fourth. So if we look at the basic absolute value function in black, notice on the right side, if x increases by one unit, y increases by one unit. But on the right side of the red graph, x has to increase four units in order for y to increase one unit. And therefore, we have a horizontal compression by a factor of one-fourth. I hope you found this helpful.